Foundation Nation. Y'all rock with me. Y'all gonna rock with me. Y'all always rock with me. Listen, go to the Mile High Minute and check it out. Check it out. My partner got a good podcast. Every chance you get, go over there and check it out, man. Mile High Minute, number one podcast in the universe today. We with a special legend all the way from L.A., man. Cartoon 53, what's the word? Oh, what's up, homie? What's up, homie? You know, glad to be here with you. Uh, yeah, man. I appreciate you for coming on the show. Let's uh, get right into it. So originally, uh, this is our first interview, so I want to get into your backstory a little bit. So you're originally from L.A.? Yeah, born and raised. On the east side? On that east side, homie. Okay. What was that? What was life like growing up in school? Oh, shoot. You know, uh, school was straight from um, like from first grade. You know, all the way up to uh, junior high school. Yeah. No problem. But, you know, at the end of junior high school, you know, that's when that, when my jail career started. So, you know, yeah. after that, wasn't, there wasn't no high school on the streets, at least. Wasn't, wasn't number jail jumping off then. Okay. And uh, I was watching some of your early interviews. You said that, like, you didn't really have a relationship with your dad up until you got, I think you were like 13. Yeah, right? man. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't know nothing about him. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a bunch of lies he used to try to tell me. Mm. Uh, would tell my mom's and I, you know, she wasn't going for it. I wasn't going for it. So I really didn't know him till, uh, I got about, like I say, 13. Yeah. Mom found out I was gang banging and she couldn't do nothing with me. She couldn't stop me. So she called herself going to send me to him. Right. So that's when I first really, really, really met him, you know? Mm. So, you know, but that didn't work out too well. Yeah. And, uh, in that interview, they said that you dropped, you got dropped off in like Inglewood, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pop stayed in Inglewood. Yeah. What was life like over there? You were only over there for a couple months, right? Yeah. About, about four months at the most, man. What it was, okay. During, you know, Inglewood is, you know, anybody that's familiar with, you know, LA, right? you know, they know Inglewood is a predominantly blood area. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a crip. So, um, when mom first took me over there to stay with him, you know, he, he old fashioned, he didn't understand the concept of I'm not safe over here. Right. I can't be over here. You know what I'm saying? Can't go to school over here. Can't run around and play up and down the streets over here. None of that. He didn't understand it. Right. So, uh, as time went on, it eventually came to a head, you know, cause I couldn't, I couldn't stay. Right. Also, I also want to shout him out too. I think it was street TV, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something I like did an interview with Alex Alonso on street TV. Yeah. Shout them out. I don't want to, you know. Give them their credit where this information is coming from. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so uh, in that interview, you're also talking about how, like, you tried poisoning your dad. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, that part. Uh, he, uh, you know, I, you, I, I idolized my older cousin. Mm -hmm. And my older cousin told me that, uh, you know, a man don't wash no dishes. So yeah. I come up, I come up under that concept that a man don't wash no dishes. So his wife uh, told me one day to wash the dishes. And I, right. you know, I wasn't going to do it. And um, he popped me in the head with a broom. It wasn't hard. It didn't hurt. It was just, you know, the straw part that tsh, caught my attention. But still, right. you know what I'm saying? I wasn't with it. I, you know, I already, I already didn't like him. You know what I'm saying? I already didn't, didn't want to be over here. And then when he did that, try to make me wash some dishes. I'm like, no. Nah. So, uh, you know, in my mind, I was like, okay, you put your hands on me. I'm going to show you. So I tried to poison him. I put some lighter fluid in his whiskey. Thought he was going to drink it and pass out. Yeah. And I was going to just run off. Yeah. And it didn't happen that way. Right. <laughs> Now, did you, do you ever like regret that or is it just like, that's no. how it happened? Well, be you honest, regret? No, I don't regret it. You know, um, the only thing I regret is that he, he died without, um, me telling him I forgive him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So other than that, but now all what we went through, that's the only thing we really went through them, them little three, four months of that little drama. Other okay. than that, I was never around him. Didn't really know him. When I first seen him, I didn't even know who he was. Okay, fair enough. So after those couple months, you went and lived back with your mom or what? Went no, yeah, I would stay back with moms again. Okay. What was life like growing up after that point? Uh, shoot the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I was caught up in that gang world. So, yeah. you know, moms couldn't do nothing with me. So, you know, she did like a lot of black mothers did in a single family household at that time. She just throwed her hands up and gave it to God, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's all she could really do with me. Okay. And you said, what was this like the middle school, high school age around then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like in the seventh grade. Okay. So you basically jumped off the porch middle school pretty early. Yeah, I, I jumped off the porch like about 12 years old. Okay. Okay.